In this video, I'm going to discuss the concept of simultaneous multi-threading. So in all the processors we've discussed so far, we've always had only one thread execute on a processor or on a core at any given point of time. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one core execute two different threads. So why would I want to do this, right? So if you look at an out-of-order processor, it maybe can support execution of six different instructions in any given cycle, right? So let's say that I have six ALUs and my issue queue can find six instructions to execute in any one given cycle. If I build a processor like that, the peak IPC should be six, where IPC is instructions per cycle, right? So if everything goes well, I should be able to find six new instructions to issue and execute in every single cycle. But most programs don't have such high levels of parallelism. So in most programs, the issue queue can only find one or two instructions to execute in any average cycle. And so in practice, the average IPC is closer to 1.5. And so this means that all the ALUs that you provided in the system are sitting underutilized most of the time. So the argument here is that if you've already invested the hardware resources to execute six instructions in a cycle, then maybe you should have two different threads that are feeding instructions into this pipeline. That increases the chances of the issue queue finding ready instructions and finding work that can keep all of these ALUs busy. So let me again try to explain this with um, another illustration. And let me go through the different options and show you the trade-offs for those different options. So I've designed a processor here that has a single core. And that single core is capable of an IPC of 1.5 while running exactly one thread. Now, if I want to double the throughput of my system, if I want to increase the throughput of my system, one option before me is to say that, well, let's build a larger processor that has two different cores on it. And so thread one runs on the first core and thread two runs on the second core. And so if you look at the IPC of these programs, they should still be you know, close to an IPC of 1.5 and 1.5 over here, which gives you an aggregate IPC of 3.0, right? So I've essentially doubled the throughput of my of my processor, but the area overhead is also double. Another option before me is to use simultaneous multi-threading. So I'm going to design only one core over here, but I'm adding some support to that core so that it can have two threads running at the same time. Empirical studies have shown that this additional support amounts to only an area overhead of about 10%. Okay, so for a relatively small area overhead, I can now have thread one and thread two both running together at the same time and both sharing the resources on this one core. So what IPCs are they going to produce, right? So if both could produce an IPC of 1.5, that, that would be a great result because I would essentially be doubling my throughput for only a 10% area increase. But what happens in practice is that each thread is not able to support an IPC of 1.5. And this is because of contention for various resources, right? So we've seen that in most cases, the ALUs are not the major contention points. But if these two threads are sharing the same cache or the same branch predictor, then you, you see a lot more contention over there. You effectively receive only half the cache capacity or half the branch predictor capacity. And that leads to a significant drop in IPC, right? So if things go well, maybe thread one can run at an IPC of 1.0 and thread two can also run at an IPC of 1.0. So you get an aggregate throughput of 2.0. So in this example, I've increased my throughput from 1.5 to 2.0. So that's a 33% increase while only increasing my area by 10%, right? So this seems like a pretty good deal where the increase in throughput is much higher than the increase in my overhead. So that's the main reason that simultaneous multi-threading was introduced. It's an area effective way of increasing throughput and it exploits the fact that most of the resources on the chip are underutilized to begin with. So here's another illustration. So this is my superscalar processor or my out of order processor supporting just one thread. And every colored box represents an instruction from that thread that is keeping an ALU busy, right? So in this example, I have four ALUs that gives me a peak throughput of four instructions per cycle. But in this first cycle over here, only two of the ALUs were busy. In the second cycle, only this one ALU was busy and so on. And then there are some cycles where all the ALUs are sitting idle. So to reduce that underutilization, I've introduced simultaneous multi-threading. You have four different threads indicated with different colors that are all injecting instructions into the pipeline. 
And the pipeline in any cycle can find instructions from any one of these threads to execute. So in this cycle here, I have all four ALUs busy and each ALU is executing an instruction from a different thread, right? So the underutilization, which in this example only happens in these two cases, is, is relatively low. There is an intermediate model as well called fine-grained multithreading, which says that, again, you can have four threads active all at the same time, but in a cycle, I can only pick instructions from one thread. So in the first cycle, I'm picking instructions from the green thread. In the second cycle, I'm picking instructions from the red thread, then gray, then yellow, then I cycle back to green, and so on. And you will see an example of this when we discuss GPUs in the next video. Okay, so just to recap again, with SMT, you can increase the number of threads being supported by a single core. Having multiple threads inject instructions into the pipeline increases my chances of utilizing all my ALUs. It increases my overall aggregate IPC. But each thread is going to see somewhat lower IPC than if it ran all by itself on the system. And this is because that thread is sharing its caches, its branch predictors, and all the resources among all of these other different threads.